What are words? Why do they have meaning? Hi, I'm John. Welcome to Philosopher's Corner. What are words? Why do they have meaning? You know, words, they're so basic in the experience that we're having that we take them for granted. We don't even think about what they are and why they are very often. So you know, let's get into it. So words are a vocal utterance that conveys a meaning. It's a communication. It's a, a form of language. I had another video where we talked about language, and language can be pretty much anything that's a form of communication. The one that we're most familiar with, I would say the most widely used one, are languages that use words. And so, you know, what are the words? You know, what? let's get back. Let's go all the way back to sort of like, what's the source of a word? Because what, what does a word do? A word communicates from one being to another a meaning, a concept, an object, whatever. It can be whatever. But the word is that moment where being A communicates something to being B and it is accurately transferring a perception from being A to being B. Now that perception can be very like a very specific like you know how words are set up where you have you know nouns and adjectives and verbs so that will vary but the word is the vibrational pattern that matches that comes out of the mouth into the other person's ear into their brain and the thought pattern or the image or the full the full thought of what's in being a's brain and what they're trying to, to convey to being b gets conveyed it's transferred from sort of the thought pattern form and then there's a vocal pattern form which is all, all you know that's what's mimicked by the writing of the word this the symbol of the word or the letters or however the visual depiction is of the vocal utterance and the vocal utterance being a pattern that's attempting to transfer the thought pattern that's in the brain to another person and when it hits them it goes in their brain if it's a proper word if it's a true word then it will accurately recreate that thought pattern in the receiving being's brain wherever the you know that portion of the brain however it interprets it and then communication occurs so the word itself <clears throat> the word itself is an attempt to communicate a thought pattern and a word is supposed to be the most indivisible unit of that thought pattern. The word is supposed to be the fundamental unit of communication. So when you have an apple, the word apple, it's an understanding of the brain and a labeling of what this particular piece of fruit is and say apple and that's it it doesn't there's no there's no truer word there's no truer utterance or a thought pattern for that particular piece of fruit and all the ways we classify it to get it down to apple that's it that's the bet it's the bedrock pattern associated with that particular object And in that way, a word is the foundational communication element for that type of language. Because it's at the core, fundamental, indivisible unit of the utterance. Which is simply 
the attempt for the brain to share the thought pattern that produces the intended effect of information transfer to another person. So the word, so you know, there's silence in the field and then a word, a vibratory pattern comes out, hits the ear, goes in the brain, dee -dee 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 -dee, and then, oh, now I know what that person is communicating to me. <clears throat> and that's just with one fundamental one. And so when you look at, say, a sentence, we'll just use English, for example, right? And you have a string of words. You have a sentence that begins, you know, here, and then it has a period. And so basically you have a series of concepts, right? So, you know, let's say you have something that, uh, you know, you have a subject, a verb, a noun, and overall gives you a time, time tense, right? So you basically just have a series of words that are really just a series of concepts that are in the brain, and you're trying to communicate those words in the sentences to people. So the words themselves being indivisible units of the language, of being these fundamental conceptual patterns that are placed on these different aspects of life, we can now line them up in a sentence to produce something more, to produce a picture, uh, a concept, to sort of give birth to this uh, line of thinking, like whatever it wants to be. Because from there, it gets it's open-ended. And the words provide the fundamental capture and relation and thus communication for essentially anything in reality. So in the basic sense, the word technically and the function it serves as a utility is the ability to get thoughts out of us and into the world in a caught like a codified way. Because for the word to continue to be in use, it has to be true. For it to go through however many generations and still be in use, it means that that utterance, that symbol that's been placed on that thing, whether it's an action or an object or a description or whatever it is, but that's been put on that what's being deemed to be sort of a fundamental unit of the reality, if it survived for a certain amount of generations, that's the filter that shows you that it's true. Because if that word, <clears throat> if that word doesn't went through time, what let's say this is the thing, right? Let's say this is the thing the word is describing and it's been put on it, let's say, 2,000 years ago, and it's going through time. If this word stopped meaning this thing properly, over enough generations of people, the word would like disappear, right? The thing would still exist, whatever that thing is, and then a new word would come to describe it that would be the accurate one. And then when it's accurate, then it keeps going and it stays with it and it stays as an accurate expression of the meaning of that thing. And then in that way, words can and do change and new ones are built as new phenomena, new objects, new perspectives come in, new words are required. Um, some words evolve. And, you know, that's not always, uh, it's not, you can't always directly say that like a word evolved or changed or like, moved or however it's shifted strictly due to utility because sometimes the utterances change with uh the trends of the time and the way people speak and, and the way the the mouth wants to pronounce things sometimes the language just shifts in general but the core words remain and you can tell that they can only stay in the lexicon in use of words if they're, you know, veritas, if their truth is like there, otherwise it gets replaced. And because it's utility, it's not an aesthetic. Like words are a utility. So that's kind of what words are. It's kind of like why they have meanings, because the words are the basic fundamental unit of the utterance of the interpretation 
in here in our minds in our brains of something from the external world or it could be the internal world of course if we're doing if we're describing internal things but either way uh it's still it's a form of putting a description and a usable verbal code that matches the pattern that we're trying the thought pattern that we're trying to convey and then written words and symbols are simply the visual depiction of those things and they have rules and they have things you know regarding them but this is just simply you know words themselves so what else what else with words obviously they have great value um and in a more speculative area kind of more fun area with words you know if we can get to a, you know people talk about telepathy let's say and telepathy has been well documented event with repeatable results and so we know that it is it is an ability for humans that some have developed and some haven't yet but we do know that it is an ability that humans do have is to be telepathic and fundamentally i would say telepathy is a point where when you have a thought pattern where would normally you would want to put it into words and then have it come out of your mouth or your hand or whatever uh into symbology Telepathy gives you that ability to, from that point, simply use a different mode of transmission, probably your third eye and your crown or whatever, some, some other, wherever the psychic functions are like put, to transfer that into the respective receptive area of the mind of somebody else like that. And then that sort of transcends words because then you're at a point where you're really starting to transfer full visions, full information patterns. And the other person can sort of like interpret them however they want. You know, if they want to put it in words, if visions, whatever, they can just like parse it out how they want. But I do, I do believe that that's the next logical, I think it's a lot of step that's been happening. I think it's the next logical step for humans in regards to the relation of words. I think words will, ex I think they'll exist even if everybody goes telepathic forever. Um, but I just think that that's that fundamental level. And I think understanding that that's what words are helps unlock, it, getting more foundational, more fundamental and primal is what helps the ability to get into higher abilities that we have and makes us more comfortable with that. Once we have the basics mastered, then it's like, oh, okay, that's cool. I can just have thoughts come and go and it doesn't freak me out. And because, you know, now we know what words are. So thanks for spending some time at Philosopher's Corner. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, have a great day.